What is going on, YouTube people? Neo Cards and Comics here today. We got a two for one PSA specials. And stop me if you've heard this before a record breaking month in grading. I know we never see these at all. This is like the fifth world record breaking month in grading numbers we've had in like the last year. Remember when people were pontificating that, oh, grading's going to slow down? Well, not so fast, my friend. Uh, but first up, PSA specials. I've seen some mixed reviews on the PSA specials, but when you look at the gem rate numbers, uh, it's not surprising. They really don't need to get that aggressive on specials. So real quick here, we have an MLB special at $16.99 per card, $15 or $400 declared value, 50 business day turnaround time. I will probably actually be taking advantage of this. Uh, I was sorting through stuff. I have some big Apple refractors and some other baseball stuff that I've been hoarding for a while, waiting for an MLB special. So I will be submitting off to this. Most likely I was going through cards over the weekend. We have a Pokemon grading special at $13 per card, uh, $200 or less declared value, 50 business day turnaround time. Uh, that is collector's club only as most of these are, but that's pretty aggressive pricing for low end Pokemon. Express grading special at 100 bucks a card, $2,500 or less. Super Express at $200 a card, $5,000 or less. Uh, a ticket one, a pack one, and a pop one. So nothing super crazy there. Uh, the real big one here is the baseball one with a bunch of baseball product coming out. Surprised they didn't try to jump on the Top Scrum basketball release, but I guess they're letting SGC have that business for now. But that is where we currently sit. Like I said, I will most definitely be taking advantage of the MLB special. My problem is, is I have like one football card I want to grade and I have one TCG card that I want to grade because I have my one piece PSA promo. So I'll have to look to see if there's an easy way to include that in that submission and wrap that all into one bundle going out. Now, on to the gem rate numbers. Once again, another record-breaking month. 1.8 million cards were graded in August. That is absolutely crazy. The previous record was May of 2024. This one just scraped by it. But wild numbers. The reason why PSA doesn't have to throw aggressive specials out, they did almost 1.4 million cards last month. That is a 10% jump and a 13% year over year. CGC coming in in second place. Obviously, most of theirs is boosted up by TCG. 10% drop month over month, but 60% year over year. SGC down 14%, but up 40%. Now, gem rate does note. He had to adjust their numbers slightly last month. So though SGC is still down for the month, it is a lot smaller than 14%. And then our old boys Beckett, uh, up 20% month over month, but only coming in at 65K total and down 13% year over year. Uh, that is the big standout. There's two standout numbers here. One, uh, the Beckett's that far behind in fourth and two, they're the only ones that have year-over-year -year shrinkage. Uh, and that was even with them increasing the month-over-month -month numbers. But PSA up 13%, CGC up 60%, SGC up 40%, and then you have Beckett going backwards at negative 13%. Uh, let's take a look at some of the individual numbers. Not surprising, PSA dominant in the sports side of things at almost 820K. SGC coming in at around 160K in sports. Uh, Beckett jumps up to third in sports with 36,000 and CGC comes in fourth at 21,000 as sports is not their claim to fame. However, in the TCG side of things, things get shaken up a little bit. Uh, PSA doing 580,000, but then we have CGC next at 150. Beckett at 28K, they are, you know, very almost evenly split between TCG and sports as a lot of people like to chase the black labels for TCG stuff. And then SGC down there at the fourth spot in TCG, they are down 34% month over month 
uh, up overall on the year, but they still just can't seem to grab that TCG market share like some of the other ones have. Uh, that is, continues to be a big area of opportunity for them if they so choose. Checking in on the gem rate by ERA, uh, CGC still continues to truck along at around a 50-ish percent mark there. Remember, that is way up. It used to be quite a bit lower than that. And in the last couple of months, that has kind of corrected a little bit. Uh, speculated that maybe some things have adjusted slightly there. SGC coming in at 40%, Beckett at 50, basically 55% in sports, and then PSA at 52% in sports. So everyone's kind of right in line, uh, other than SGC being slightly tougher for a gem mint grade. Uh, TCG always tends to grade pretty well. Uh, we have PSA coming in at just under 70%, Beckett coming in at 84%. That's why they get so much TCG business. Uh, SGC at 48% seems awful low, and then CGC coming in at 62%. So the outlier there is definitely the SGC TCG at 48%. That almost makes me wonder if they're grading TCG a little too harshly when you look at them compared to everybody else, and could be a reason why they are struggling a little bit in that market, because why are you going to send cards off them if they're tougher to gem? And they're definitely not leading in the resale value by any way, shape, or form in TCG. So why wouldn't you go to one of the other companies? But I always like looking at this just to see kind of, you know, are there any major outliers like that? You see it in basically both SGC categories uh, being the toughest to gem on a sports card and the toughest to gem by a large margin on TCG compared to some of the others. All right, let's pop over and look at the emergent graders. Arena basically sticking at 13K. This is the month of everyone basically stayed the, the same. Arena sitting at 13,000 still. Once again, that is primarily driven by their marketplace and their slab packs. You don't really see Arena Club slabs in the wild. Uh, I can't. I saw a handful, maybe a dozen total. And usually it's all centered around one table at like the National and Fanatics Fest combined. I think I saw maybe a table's worth of arena. Same with tag. There was like one table at the National that had a ton of tag, but you don't ever really see them filtered in uh, to like other people's tables. They came in at 21,000-ish, down ever so slightly from the previous month. They basically repeated their month over again. And then same thing that we are continuing to see. Uh, a bulk of tag business is Pokemon. So of their 21,000, almost 17,000 of, I think it was just slightly under 17,000, is Pokemon. And a lot of that is being driven by repacks. More than that in a second. And then HGA, rest in peace, uh, put up a zero burger as they are realigning their strategies. Uh, once again, I will stick by the comments that I made a while back. I would be shocked if they grade another card, but we will see. Now, regarding tagging the 21,000 number with the 17K poke, this is not the only one. There are a couple, uh, but this is exactly where a big chunk of those are going. This is Poke Collect, uh, who does sell a decent chunk on whatnot as well on individuals, but they also have a litany of tag mystery boxes you can see here one two three four five different versions of tag mystery boxes and i think there is another company potentially doing this as well so that seems to be where a bulk of the tag product is going and why that matters is because people are like well, what's the difference they're getting the business who cares now from tags perspective it's smart uh, you know, you're getting slabs out into the wild and in people's hands, but and all the all the grading companies have repackers that grade with them. The scary part to me is the percentage that is made up of their monthly numbers from this. Now, we don't know how much of the 17K is going to repacks and mystery boxes and whatnot flippers, but I have to imagine a decent chunk of it is. And where that's scary is, is that your business is being completely propped up by one or two repackers. What happens if that faucet gets shut off? 
what is your actual true demand to your customer base? And also, are you preventing actual general use customers from getting product into you because you're prioritizing the repack? On the larger companies, that's not a problem. They could do both because they're a lot bigger and they're at scale. For tag, it's a little bit more interesting in my opinion. You know, if the repacker shut the faucet off, what do the tag monthly numbers suddenly look like? You know, they got that big boost up uh, almost a year ago now. I think I forget how far back that was when the Pokemon started hopping. Uh, basically first of the year. So, you know, was this a deal that started in the beginning of 2024? Because they were doing about five to six, 6,000. You know, they were seeing decent growth. 5,000, 5,900, 7,200. And then the beginning of the year is where things went off the rail, but you're still seeing. So let's pretend the Pokemon numbers don't exist. You're looking at, a, you know, they get a little bit of Pokemon regardless. You'd be looking at what? Four to five K outside the Pokemon. Same thing. Four to five K. Uh, they dropped off in March, but then picked right back up again. 12 K in Pokemon. Once again, about 5,000 cards outside of the Pokemon repack. Uh, about four to 5,000 cards. Here we had a massive one, but once again, if you take away the Pokemon number, you're looking at around 5,000-ish. Same thing here and same thing here. Like I said, they're still gonna get some Pokemon regardless, just from collectors doing it. But that does worry me a little bit that a bulk of their business is coming from that. But hey, you're not gonna turn down business, so do what you got to do. But what happens when that goes away is the interesting thing, I think, to monitor. Uh, it probably won't be going away anytime soon. Uh, Poke Collect is a pretty large outfit. Uh, they have a pretty decent social media following, uh, and they do sell, I believe, a lot of this stuff on their streams and on their website. So that is all I got for you in regards to grading for this month. We have the PSA Baseball Special. And then we have the SGC Tops Chrome special that we talked about in the Sunday video. Another record-smashing month for grading overall, even for the little guys. As always, we'll be curious to see where all of this is, goes. Curious for your thoughts and comments down below. We will catch you tomorrow for a Tops Composite Football box opening. That's what I got lined up for y'all. We'll see you then. Oh, and also, I forgot, tonight... Content creator, fantasy football league, probably be live streamed uh, across my channel and multiples, but come check that out as well. Catch you boys and girls on the next one. Peace.